Today I'm going to talk about love. Love. We're all experts in love, right? We know everything about love. Well, we'll find out. Uh, today I'm going to read from, I'm going to share with you from 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 through 12. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 through 12. Okay. Let's read it together. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 through 12. Okay, let's begin. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only Son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us, and his love is brought to full expression in us. Over the years, I've talked to many people about God. I have witnessed to people about God. That means I talk to strangers, pe people that do not know God, and I would talk to them about God. Oftentimes, I would, uh, I would talk, to, talk about God to my friends. I would go to uh, college campuses, and I would walk up to strangers, and I would talk to them about God. And, and one of the things that I would often tell them is that the truth, the fact that how much God loved them. You know, I would, you know, the conversation would usually go like, you know, do you go to church? No, really? You know, I want to talk to you about God. And, and I just want you to know that God loves you very, very much. You know, oftentimes, you know, when I say the word that God loves you very, very much, you know, that really has, for me, is a profound, it's an amazing, it's a powerful statement. Even just today, um, moments earlier, when we're singing praises to God, I was reminded about God's love for me. And when I was reminded of that, it really touched my heart, and I was almost brought to tears. Because I know how amazing God's love is. But when I talk to others about God, and when I tell them that, you know, God loves you, and when these people hear that term, God loves you, I would notice that the word love did not have the same impact that it often had on me when I thought about God's love in my life. And for the longest time, you know, I thought to myself, how come this word love is not, you know, does not, is not communicated in a way that I want it to be communicated? But then I thought about that, and I would talk to many people, and I came to realize that many of us, many people especially that do not know God, they, their understanding of love is not the same understanding of love that we have. I remember I was talking to a friend one time about God, and, and he was in tears because... And he would tell me about his story, about how his father would always say he loved his mother, and yet, like once or twice a week, he would physically abuse, hit his mother. That was his understanding of love. One time I was talking to a young lady, and we really tried to talk some sense into her. And we, you've heard this a lot, is that her husband abused her. Her husband would hit her, and then, you know, I would say, why don't you, uh, you know, you need to get away because your life is in danger. And your husband, he needs to uh, get his you know, mind straight. And then she would, the amazing thing is she would continue to defend her husband and say, you know, he's doing it because he loves me. Even when he hits me, he's doing it because he loves me. Amazing. I've been doing youth ministry for about 12 years and I would talk to kids and it, it breaks my heart whenever I talk to kids and especially now in, in, in today's culture, I would talk to them and they would always say, oh yeah, I have mom, I have my dad, but they're divorced. And that's not, that's not just one or two. I mean, it's just a lot. And I've come to understand that a child grows up, their understanding of love comes from their parent, parents, the way they love each other and the, and the way they love you, know, you the child. And so many children nowadays, they grew up, and their understanding of love is this. You know, my father and mother, they love each other, but they always fight. My father and my mother, they love me, but you know what? You know, 
you know, they love me, but they got a divorce. And because they got a divorce, they don't, you know, live with me. But they love me, but they don't live with me. They love me, but they only see me once a month. I have uh, you know, one of our past church members, she shared with me about how, how her father and mother got divorced when she was young. And she still held that love toward her father, but then her father would often reject her and say, you know, don't call me. I don't want to talk to you anymore. See, so nowadays in our society, our understanding of love is not the same. It's not the same that we know. The same love that we know and we understand from God. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 through 12, in this passage, John beautifully tells us, gives us an example of what real love is. It is not the love that many of us have come to understand. It is very different. When God says, I love you, it is very different than the love that we understand. We've been disappointed so many times. We've been hurt so many times. I want to go back and mention another story. There are many people out there, when they hear about love, first thing that comes to their mind is the relationship they were in. I know so many people that say, oh, you know, this person said they love me, they love me, but then after about a few months, they rejected me. They cast me away, cast me aside. See, that is their understanding of love. You love me only when, you, when it's convenient for you. You will love me only for a short time, but that love does not last. But again, I tell you that God's love for us is not the same. God's love for us is the real love. It's the genuine love. And again, 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 through 12, it gives us a beautiful idea and the image of God's love towards us. It says, Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into this world so that we might have eternal life. This is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to, as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us. And His love is brought to full expression in us. There are certain words, as I was reading this passage, I kind of accentuated by, you know, I accentuated it by speaking a little bit louder. But in this passage, there are some principles that it gives us about what real love is. And I want to share those four things with you today. First thing that we need to know about love, real love, is that real love does not end. So often I share with you, so many people profess love for somebody, and yet after the first big fight or after the first big argument, they break up. I don't know, I can tell you how many young people that I know, they say, oh, I'm in love, I'm in love, and that person loves me, he loves me, she loves me, and then only to see a few months later that relationship breaks up. And I know, because I know why they break up. Because these young people, they do not fully understand what love is. They think love is an emotion. They think love is an you know, infatuation. And somehow they substitute love and infatu I mean, you know, infatuation with love. And when they hear about God's love for us, in their mind, subconsciously, they feel like, you know what, God loves me only you know, for temporarily. It's conditional. If I don't behave well, if there's no passion, if I don't feel strong, strong love towards Him, God's not going to love me back. Sometimes we feel like, you know, God will love me, but it's only for a little while because, you know, I've been in a relationship for two and three years. We were in a relationship. We lived together. We said to one another, we love each other. And yet, you know what? After a while, we decided it's not going to work, and we separate. Jeremiah 31, verse 3 states, Long ago, the Lord said to Israel, I have loved you, my people, with an everlasting love. With unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. You see, God says, my love for you is not temporary. 
My love for you is not for one year or two year or three year. It's not dependent upon how I feel about you or how you feel about me. It is eternal. Romans chapter 8 verse 38 and 39 it says, And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or, on, or in, the earth, in the earth below indeed. Nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The Bible says that His love for us, God's love for us, it is eternal. And there's nothing, there's nothing on earth that can ever separate us from that love. Even our rejection of Him will not separate God's love from us. Even our life on earth, no matter how much we sin, even if we committed the worst of crime, it cannot separate us from God's love. God will continue to love us no matter what. That is real love. You know, that's why for years, I'm just, it's a side note, I've always said young people should not date. Because first of all, they do not really understand what real love is. And the earlier the date, early that uh, young people date, their hearts will get broken more. And it'll just delusion them about what real love is. Real love lasts. Real love is eternal. You know, in America, there's a saying called, out of sight, out of mind. Have you heard of that? Out of sight, out of mind. It simply means that, you know what, if, no matter how much you like someone, if you don't see them for a long time, that feeling will go away. No matter how much you like someone, no matter how much you, you feel like you love someone, if you don't see them for a while, that feeling will go away. And you know, I have to say, that is very true in most cases. You know, I left Houston three and a half years ago. And before I left Houston, I left a very, very wonderful church. I served as a pastor, youth pastor there for eight years. That's a long time. And when I left, I tell you, there were lots of tears. And there were very few people, faces that without tears the day that I left. In fact, after I left, within the first month, and I'm not exaggerating and I'm not trying to boast, but I probably received the first year that I came to Korea, I probably received about 500 emails from the people back home. Not just from my students, but not just from, also from adult leaders, workers, and my friends. About 500, maybe even more. Sometimes I would get about five, six, seven emails a day. And they would often write, you know, Pastor Paul, you know, we miss you. you know? And a lot of them, you know, they would write me emails saying, I didn't get a chance to say proper goodbye to you. And I just want you to know how much I appreciated you. And they really expressed lots of love. And I tell you, you know, really, it warmed my heart when I, would re when I received those emails. But, you know, that only lasted for a short while. I've been in Korea now for three and a half years. And I tell you, now I probably get about one email a month from back home. And that's not to say that they don't care about me or they have stopped liking me. It just means that out of sight, out of mind. It's been a three and a half years. You know, they have their own life. They move on. They have their own school, graduate school. They work now. And they're busy with other things. And, and because, you know, they, they don't see me, they don't think about me. See, that is true. But that is not true when it comes to real love. When you love somebody honestly with your heart, out of sight and out of mind does not apply. I have a cousin who's been divorced for several years, I think about seven or eight years. And he hasn't seen his children in a long, long time. He, he, he and his wife separated. And he separated while his son was very young. His daughter was, you know, somewhat, you know, a little bit older. But he hasn't seen them. And he tells me, even till this day, he thinks about them almost daily. He said, time to time, when he thinks about them, especially during Christmas or special days, he would cry. 
Even though it's been years since he's seen them, he says, my love for them has never wavered. He said, even to the day that I die, my love for them will not go away. You see, real love is eternal. Real love lasts forever. Oftentimes, nowadays, I see on television, you know, they started this again about reunification, where we're reuniting brothers and sisters and parents and child from North Korea and South Korea that were separated uh, because of the Korean War. And it's amazing to see, some, amazing to hear some of the words that comes out of these people. These people are like 80, 90 years old, and they see their younger brother, younger sister, and they cry and they, they, they cry and they embrace. And the words that come out is like, you know, I haven't seen you for the past, you know, what, 50 years, 60 years. And he says, you know what, but I still not have not forgotten you even a single day. You see, that is love. See, real love lasts forever. Real love does not end. Real love is eternal. Second characteristics of real love is that it is selfless. It is selfless. Romans chapter 2, verse 4, it says, Don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you. Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that his kindness is intended in, in, uh, to turn you from your sin? In other words, the nature of love is to give. See, real love gives. Real love is selfless. You know, I'm a father and I'm a husband. And as a husband and a father, Everything that I do, and I'm not boasting, I'm speaking for all the fathers and husbands here. Everything that I do, it is with a purpose and intent to make my family happy and healthy and better. And it is true. And again, I'm not being noble. I'm speaking for all of us. I know that all of you, when you work, you don't work so that you can have a better clothes or better car or bigger house. You do it because you envision, you know, providing for your wife. You do it because you envision somehow, someday in the future, you can provide for your children. Why? Because you love them. And real love is selfless. Sometimes after a long day's work, I come home. And I know that my kids, they won't leave me alone. You know, they've been going to school and after school program the whole day. And when daddy comes, they, they want to start jumping on my back, jumping on my shoulder. And then they want to go outside because they've been waiting for me. Because mommy, she's been cooking and she's tired all day. So they've been waiting for their daddy to come. And when he comes, they want the daddy to come outside and play with them. Maybe walk to the Lokte Mart and, and come back and so forth. And I tell you, you know, majority of the time I tell them, no, that is tired. But it is the love that, that's within me that tells me sometimes. I said, okay, put your shoes on, put your socks on. Why? Because love is selfless. Love is about giving. And it is that love that, that makes you, that enables us, that makes us want to and willingly make sacrifices. Why? Because love is selfless. Third characteristics. Third characteristic of love is that love cannot be earned or given. First thing is real love lasts forever. Second, real love is selfless. Third, real love cannot be earned or given. Cannot be earned or given. First John chapter 4 verse 19 it says, "We love each other because he loved us first." It means that God loved us not because we earned it. Even before we did anything else towards God, even before we did anything, we did, before we even knew God, God loved us. You see, real love cannot be earned. It is given. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, God saved you by His grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation, salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. You know, I mentioned this before a long time ago. In America, there's a really a well-known pastor called Tony Evans. 
and I forever remember this because he said, you know, he believes, he says, God gave us family because God wanted to give us an illustration of his love for us. Because when we look at the life and relationship within the family, we get a glimpse of God's love, God's relationship towards us. And I agree with that 100%. Because when I look at my relationship with my family, I get a glimpse of God's love towards me. When we think about our children, do we love our children because they earned your love? Do you love your children because they earned your love? You're grinning because obviously the answer is no. Our children did nothing to earn our love. In fact, if we really want to examine it, it is just the opposite. If anything, they've done so many things for us, for them to lose love from us. They disobey us. They're disrespectful to us. They make mess. They spend our money. They don't say thank you. Come on. If anyone else in this world did that to us, do you think we would love them? Absolutely not. In fact, we would reject them. We would curse them. We say, I don't ever want to see you again. If people did that in our workplace, how would you react? You give them something, they don't say thank you. you don't, they don't appreciate you. They don't say hi to you. They, look, they disrespect you. You would not even associate with them. If they did that at your school, you would say, you know what, I'm going to stay away from them as far as possible. And yet, when our children do that, it does not matter. We still love them. Because why? Real love is not dependent on our merit. Real love cannot be earned. It is simply given. We love our children. Why? Because we chose to love them. Because they're our own. Simply because they're ours. And we have made a decision to love them. We have made a decision to say that they're part of me. See, real love is given. You know, when I look at my mother's love for me, and it's appropriate, by the way, I did not plan this. It's amazing because I look at myself. When I think about my mother's love, I think about myself. And I realize that there's so many others that are more deserving of love than me. And believe me when I say that I am by no means am I trying to be humble when I say these things. But there's so many people out there that are smarter than me. There's so many other people out there that are nicer than me. There are many out there that work harder than me. And I know I joke about this a lot, but I know that there are many others out there that are even better looking than me. But the reality is this. My mother and my father, for that matter, their love for me is not because I deserve it. Their love for me is simply given to me because they've chosen to love me. See, it's the same way with God's love. See, God didn't love us. God doesn't love us because we earned it or because we deserved it. God loved us simply because we are his creation and he has chosen in his heart to love us. God loves us simply because he considers us and he embraced us and adopted us as his own, as his own children. His love is based on his grace, not based on our merit. You see, that is real love. When somebody says, I love you because I give you lots of candy, we see that all the time. When I, teach, when I taught at the, in a private school, a bunch of high school and junior high kids, they always say, I love you, whenever I buy them food. Whenever I take them out to eat, they always say, I love you. I know that that's not real love. That's just appreciation. Because real love is not earned. It is not based on our merit. It is simply given. Real love is eternal. Real love is selfless. Real love cannot be earned, but it is given. And lastly, real love is unconditional. It is unconditional. It is not based on what we can or cannot produce. It comes from the heart of God. Something we all should know is that we can never reach a place, a man can never reach a place where man cannot be loved by God. Let me say it one more time. We will never be 
we will never reach a place, we, will, we can never be in a place or a time where God will not love us. It doesn't matter how bad, how awful, how terrible we are. It will never change God's love for us. Because God's love for us is unconditional. We can live for the rest of our lives until the moment that we die and say, God, I hate you, I reject you, and I, can, I curse you. We can do that for the rest of our days. Now, we will live the consequence of our rejection, but that will never change God's love for us because his love for us is unconditional. God loved us first before we even knew him. It is unconditional, his love for us. God never says to us, I love you so that you need to do this or that. 1 John chapter 5, verse 3 states, Loving God means keeping his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. What it says here is that God's love for us, God loves us no matter what. What? And all the things that we do for him, it is not out of guilt or payment, but it is simply out of love. See, so many people out there in the world, they're confused about God's love for us and our love for God. They see many Christians going to church on Wednesday night, on Sunday, and maybe Sunday night service, and they go to the small group meetings on Friday. And they see many Korean Christians going to church Saturday, Sunday, you know, every morning for the morning prayer. And there are many people out there, they think, you know, they're doing this because they want to earn God's favor. That is just not so. They see many Christians, they come and they give you know, tithing. They give 10% of their income to God. And they say, you know, why are they doing it? They're doing it because Christians, they want to earn favor from God. All these Christians, they go on mission trips. All these Christians, they come and serve. They do volunteer work. They do all these things. Why? Because they want to earn favor from God. And you know, they're so far from the truth. Because God's love for us and our love for God is unconditional. He will love us no matter what we do. And we will love God no matter what God does. And in this passage, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, it states, but all the things that we do, really, it is not a burden to us. All the things that we do for God, we do it out of love. And it is never a burden. Even this, you know, I mentioned to you earlier, this Saturday morning, I went to just, you know, Without going into details, for the past two weeks, I've been really, really busy. In fact, I've been coming home at 11, 12, sometimes one day I came home at like 1.30 in the morning. I just had a lot of work to do. And it kind of carried on, and I remember telling myself, oh, I just wish I could have one day where I can sleep in, sleep in a little late. You know, and then this past Thursday or so, I finished the work that I needed to do. And I'm like, oh, I'm free. Now I can sleep, but I can't sleep in Friday because I have school. I have classes to teach. And then Saturday, I'm like, oh, I can sleep in, but I couldn't because my mom is coming at 7 o'clock in the morning, and I had to go pick her up. I had to wake up at 4 o'clock. But I tell you this. When I went to pick up my mom, I called my, you know, my brother about a week and a half ago to find out what time my mom was coming in, because to me, it wasn't a matter of choice. It wasn't an issue. I was going to pick up my mom. Even if she came at 2 o'clock in the morning, it did not matter. Now, it's, I wish she could come later, of course, but it did not matter. No matter what time she came, I was going to go. If I could go, I was going to go and pick her up. Not out of guilt, not because she's paying me, but simply because she's my mother, and I love her. My mother's love for me is unconditional. Our God's love for me is unconditional. My love for my mother is unconditional. When I spend time with my children, I don't, you know, sometimes I have to say, maybe I do it out of guilt. Thing, I should have done more. I haven't played with them a long time. But in most instances, all the things that I do, 
you know, the wor extra work that I do, maybe for extra income, you know, the trip that I have to take, maybe driving all night just for my kids, going to their taekwondo presentations, piano recitals in a small 24 pyong apartment filled with 50 people crunched, you know, crunched up and having to listen to 20 other kids recital whom I c could care less, but I'm doing all that why? Because I want to hear my son do that two minutes of piano recital. Why? Not out of guilt, not out of burden, but simply because I love them. In the same way, my obedience to God it's never out of guilt. It's never out of love. It's never out of obligation. I serve God because I love Him. I obey God because I love Him. I give to God because I love Him. And I love others because God loved me unconditionally. You see, when we do things out of love, it is never a burden. It is only when we do things without love, it becomes a burden. I don't consider the things that I do for my family a burden. I remember a phrase that, that my brother said to me a while back. And I have to tell you, and I mentioned this before, that my brother is one of the most generous person that I know. And I'm not just talking about few people, I'm talking about everyone that I know in this world. And I met a lot. You know, my brother, you know, he, he, he put me through seminary. Basically, he gave me money every week, pay for my tuition, pay for my living expense. And I remember uh, 10 years ago when I got married to my wife, you know, we wanted to buy our first house. And, uh, you know, it's kind of bad, but I, you know, I didn't have any money. But I know my, my parents, they didn't want me to live in an apartment, continue to pay rent like $1,200, $1,500 a month. So they were encouraging me to buy a home, and I knew, knowing my family, they were going to give me maybe some money, down payment. In America, in order to buy a house, you need to get a loan. You need to get maybe 5% down payment. You need to have a loan about 5%. So my loan, probably I needed about $7,000, $8,000 to get a loan uh, for maybe about $130,000, $135,000 loan. And I knew that my brother would gladly give me that. But I remember when I bought the first home, my brother, he gave me $45,000. Says, you know, Paul, Kimun, my Korean name is Kimun. He says, Kimun, here. You know, I don't want you to have a high mortgage payment each month. So I give you this money to put on down payment. Of course, I refused him. I said, you know, I said, you know, young. I said, you know, older brother. I said, young. I only need about seven or eight thousand. Please don't don't give it to me. But if you know my brother, there's no way to argue. And I remember um, three and a half years ago when I came out to Korea. My brother, again, before I left for Korea, he gave me a large envelope full of money. I'm not going to tell you how much, but it was a large sum. But even before he gave me the money, I had a feeling he was going to do something like that. So before he did anything, I went to my brother and I said, "Young, please, don't give me any more money." I said, young, I'm a grown man too, and I have money of my own. And I told my brother, young, you've given me money, and you've given me all, everything, and all my life, you've always given me. And you know, I, you know, it's okay, it's enough. And I forever, I remember my brother's response. And he didn't say it with any emotionally, he didn't say it, you know, with a loud voice. He just said it as a matter of fact. He just looked at me and says, Kimun, you're my brother. I love you. I'm happy to do it. He simply said, and that phrase, he says, and he said it in English, he says, I'm happy to do it. And for the first time I realized, it just really hit me. All the things that my brother did for me, you know, helping me, paying for my graduate school, you know, giving me allowance, giving me payment for the house, down payment for the house and do different things. I realized, and the way he said it, I realized for the first time, 100%, truly, that he did it because he was, he was happy to do it. You see, God, in all the things that God's done for us, He's done it because you know, He was happy to do it. And because of that love, because of that relationship, all the things that we do for God, 
all the sacrifices, all the service, all the giving. You know, I do it. You know, sometimes I don't, I don't want to say it's easy. It's not. All the things that I have to do for church, it's not oftentimes easy. And the giving of money is not oftentimes easy. Sometimes I think about oh, the things that I can do. But in the end, I think about God's love for me. And then when I do these things and when I give to God, simply in my heart, I look at God and in my heart I say to God, God, I'm happy to do it. You see, the love that God has for us is unconditional. And we as his children, because we receive that, we try to love, back, love God back in the same way, unconditionally. All the things that God does, all the things that God does for us, I realize that He does it because He gives Him great pleasure. And all the things that I do, I do. All the things that I do for God, I do because it brings me great pleasure. You see, this is real love. It is not a love that ends after three months. It's not an end. It's not a love that is, you know, because it's given because we deserve it. It is not a love that, you know, hoping that because I love somebody, it's going to come back. It is totally selfless. It is a love that is totally unconditional. And for those of us who are Christians, we understand this. That 2,000 years ago, God demonstrated this real love on Calvary. When God chose to become man in the person of Jesus Christ, and he chose for no reason other than his love for us, he chose to suffer a humiliating death, death for our sins, simply because he loved us. So next time when I say to you, God loves you, I want you to know that love is the real love that I talked about today. And next time when you tell someone that God loves them, pray that someday that they will truly understand that the love that they understand is not the same that the love that we're sharing from God. It is the real love. It is real love that we're sharing. Let me close with one final passage, an enduring passage that we all know, John 3.16. For God so loved the world so much, that he gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. This is real love. Let us pray.